What's up, everybody? Yeah. And welcome back to Greasy Says. My name is Greasy, aka Arthur, aka MQ. Hold up. AKA MQ. <laughs> AKA M. And this is a show from the perspective of a brown game developer in the year 2021. Post pandemic. Yeah, right. Uh, Mid pandemic. It's a pan pan pandemic. Yep. This show is just my perspectives and takes on the gaming industry. After having 15 years worked in the gaming industry, still working in the gaming industry, in many roles, I'll get into my backstory later. But uh, I'm just here to offer that perspective. And I hope that you guys will join me in offering your perspectives on being a quote unquote minority who makes games. So buckle up, fuckers. All right. Today's key is... Ooh. Yeah, uh, I'm trying a new thing where I just pick a key for the whole episode. Uh, and all the auto-tune stuff and all the... If I write original music for the episode, it's all in that key. If you have a key that you want me to do an episode in, just let me know. I'll try my best. Don't pick up some fucked up key. Actually, you could pick some fucked up keys. Yeah, why not? Go for it. Ooh, you could pick some fucked up keys. So this dude I work with once said to me, uh, you seem to have a way of making complicated things seem really simple or sound really simple. To me, that's a huge fucking compliment. But uh, I was thinking about how do you, how would you explain games sort of in a metaphorical way? Metaphorical. Uh, that's relatable to like real life, to like everyday life or something that everyone would understand. Because making games is kind of like naturally a very nerdy thing and a very technical thing. And as soon as you start talking about it, people get bored. I'm bored right now. I'd rather talk about making games in a more relatable way. So that makes it a perfect time for... Ah, shit. Still figuring all this shit, man. I I'm thinking about getting a push uh, just so I can fucking do this show in like the craziest way ever. Uh, but anyway, it's time for some... Haha, -ha, let's get ah, this fuck. party started! God death with the fuck. Crazy says... Shit, it's not time for that. <laughs> it's, it, it's time for... Ah, fuck! Who's got a question? Lol, it's amateur hour. No, it's it's actually time for reflection. We're gonna get this right someday, guys. Don't worry. Guys and gals, guys and gals. I gotta stop saying guys all the time. I don't want to appeal to just guys. I want to appeal to everybody. Yeah. So anyway, it's time for some reflection. Making games is like building a house, planning, zoning building things to code, blueprints, engineers, designers, framing, paint colors, electric, dealing with fucking plumbers, demolition, cleanup, investors, the whole nine. It takes years to build a house, and often much of that time is spent planning and replanning, and then planning again, followed by a very short period of actually building the damn thing. Now, this is just my perspective. Other developers probably have different takes on this and different orders of operation, but it's likely that most of these steps overlap. Each stage of building a house involves different people and trades with vastly different specialties, all working towards a common goal, but sometimes not knowing what is planned for the future or what came before. Let's compare the steps in building a house and making a game. 
All right. Planning, blueprints, long, boring conversations, and lofty dreams, that's design. Zoning, structural engineers, framing, fucking plumbers, and dream crushing, that's code. Interior design, insulation, drywall, paint colors, lighting, hardwood floors, shiny appliances, Wi-Fi thermostats, those geometric plant holders that everyone's into, everything that makes a house livable, that's art and audio. Banks and lenders, and further dream crushing, that's the suits. The realtors who will tell any lie to sell or buy the completed house, that's publishing. And finally, the family that's moving in, and occasional dream crushing, that's QA. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm just fucking around with the whole dream crushing thing. But there is a fair amount of dream crushing that happens when you make games. And that's just a reality. As a creative endeavor, there's always going to be some disappointment. And you're not going to get your full original vision made. It's just, at least, unless you're like Hideo Kojima. I'm sure even he makes fucking concessions uh, when he makes games. Because some of his ideas might be completely ridiculous or not realistic. So I think dream crushing is something you need to, to come to terms with when you make games or any creative product. All right. All right, let's talk about fucking plumbers, okay? Fucking plumbers, right? You ever, you, like, you ever liked a plumber you worked with? Have you ever, you have a, a good plumber uh, who's also a nice guy? I've never met a good plumber who's a nice guy. Every plumber who's a nice guy usually sucks at plumbing. But the assholes are always good, the good plumbers. I had this dude working on my house. Actually, it was kind of funny. He was kind of a dick. He was always a dick. He, he, was, he like spoke down to like my mother-in-law, like made her, like talking to her like old school, like she's like a dumb woman and shit. Even... He was pissing her off, and she's a nice fucking lady, all right? So this, yeah, we had this guy working on the house. Uh, he was a complete... Uh-oh. But he was working with the guy I hired to do some work. So I had to work with him. Um, I wasn't going to upend the whole fucking uh, job just because of this dickhead. Even he, he would even, like, talk down to his son, who was his apprentice, like, making him feel stupid and shit. Like, I couldn't even imagine my dad making me feel so fucking stupid on a job. But he was, that kid was kind of dopey, though. Yeah. He seemed like a frustrated cat. You know what I mean? And, and like, a lot of plumbers, they just seem frustrated. I get it. You're rolling around in shit all day. You're fucking opening pipes where nobody want to go and cleaning out a bunch of bullshit and gunk and fucking flushables and all the shit people think they could flush down a toilet but don't really, could, cannot really be fucking flushed down a toilet. You know what I'm talking about, y'all. I know y'all flush some shit. I definitely flush some shit. And not just shit in my day, dog. Trust me. Okay? Toilets can take a lot. So, like, yeah. Plumbers are bitter motherfuckers. Right? They're just angry. Uh, they don't know how to talk to people. They think everyone's a fucking idiot. And you know what? Coders are exactly the fucking same. Oh, if you're a coder listening to this and you just raise your fucking eyebrows or you just lean back in your chair and you're like, this fucking dope, fuck you, okay? Coders, y'all have this insane superiority complex. It's crazy. I, get, I understand why. I get that the game will not get fucking made without you. You are vital to the game's existence. Which is why you're fucking similar to plumbers. Because you can't live in a fucking house that don't have a shit tube and don't have water coming in. So you just as essential as a fucking plumber. I get that. You are the Mario of games. Without you, they have no fucking game. I get that. But do you have to be such a <coughs> cunt about it? Do you? You hold all the chips. You know that. You getting paid the most out of anybody except maybe executives. You know that. Why you gotta be a uh -oh. on top? We know you're smart. We know you're smarter than anybody else in the room. We know that 
you already figured out 10 things wrong with this design idea that this person is pouring out their creative hearts on in the middle of a fucking meeting. And you just waiting to shit on that fucking idea because you already calculating in your head all the things are wrong with it. Why you to be a cop? Uh-oh. No. There are a couple uh, coders who aren't c- Uh-oh. Granted, there are plumbers who are nice. It's very fucking rare. And it's a specialized type of plumber who isn't an asshole. Who, the plumber who's like, all right, you know what? I'm done with all this. See, crawling under the fucking crawl space and, and cutting giant fucking four-inch pipes and shit falling down on me and all this kind of bullshit and working for fucking grandma and grandpa techs down the fucking road who been doing their own plumbing, rogue plumbing for fucking 50 years. You giving all that up. You're like, fuck all that. I just installing fucking water heaters. That's all I'm doing from here on out. Those plumbers, happy as papi. Stoked because their job man fucking easy. They come in, they go squeak, 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 and they out. And they made fucking 200 bucks or however much. Plumbers get paid and coders get paid. And the coders who are not fucking assholes anymore are the ones who are like, you know what? I'm going to just optimize. I'm going to get so good at optimizing that I'm just, I, you put me in the end of the game. You still need me at the end of development, right? You have to have me or else your game going to run like shit. Your game going to run like fucking Viva Pinata. You know what I mean? Chugging along because the artist decided to put a million fucking polys on that thing or the skybox too fucking big or whatever. You know what I mean? But you get to chill. You just sit back and you're like, yeah, it'll be ready when it's ready. Yeah, yeah. And then you calm down. You bring yourself down. You don't get involved in a lot of shit. You don't even have to go to a lot of meetings. You're just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm optimizing. Look at, look at this. Look at the frame rate number. It, yesterday it was 12. Today it's 15. Results, motherfucker, is right there. I think quarters like that, they, they don't have to. I don't know what happened. Like some switch in their head. And they don't, they don't fucking be as assholeish anymore. But they still have asshole in there. Within that asshole is an even deeper asshole. For sure. Yo, coders, I love y'all, but y'all know this shit is true. And I know anybody listening to this who works in games has encountered a Uh coder at least once. At least once a week? What is up with y'all? Relax. Fucking raven. Well, okay, I had to take a little break on that one and blaze. I had to blaze real quick. Getting too amped up. Start talking about plumbers. You get me going with plumbers? Shit. Shit. You know, I realized I forgot. I didn't include producers uh, in my fucking speech or whatever. Uh, Producers. They're everywhere. There are a a bajillion producers. What do producers do? They organize shit. They organize a bunch of creative motherfuckers. And fucking plumbers. They organize those people. Make sure shit gets done on time. Basically, or uh, keep the schedule going, blah, blah, blah. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, this is going to be controversial, maybe. Is it possible for men to be good producers? Yeah, soak it in. Soak it in. Drink it in. Yep, bubble. Bubble, bubble, toil in fucking trouble. Yeah. Male, are there any good male producers? Okay, wait. Nope, I'm thinking of one. He was the... He was the shit. He was the shit. But he's gone now. I don't work with him anymore. He left. He was a nice guy. Genuinely nice guy. Too nice for production. Like, too nice. A lot of dudes in production. I, I don't know what it is. They have certain producers. Like, it's like the same personality that goes out and becomes a cop is the personality that becomes a, a producer most of the time. Excluding the ladies. I'm going to get to the ladies. But like that same chip, ego chip on your fucking shoulder, you know, that's what so many male producers I've seen and worked with have. Where they got to keep tabs on you and they got to fucking track you down and fucking this bad cop fucking shit. Like, dog, it'll get done. You know what I mean? Just relax, fucking keep playing fucking Hearthstone or whatever. Just fucking chill out. Just wait. Tell me when to get it done. I'm going to do it. 
And if not, we going we gonna figure it out. Just fucking chill. Why you gotta be, you know, aggro fucking, you know, beating your chest like a fucking monkey. Man, producers pissed me off too. I don't know what what would I uh Oh, you know what who they are? They're the fucking um the site manager. Uh, on on site building the house. Always coming around with their little notepad, their little clipboard. You get this done yet? No. Go away. Come, I'll, I'll tell you when it's done. Okay? How about that? I'll send you a little fucking note. You can put it in your clipboard. <laughs> I'm bugging, y'all. I'm bugging. You know what, though? Uh, let's, let's make fun of me. You know? You gotta make fun of yourself sometimes. Uh, I fall into the fucking... Uh, what do you call it? I'm the surround sound guy. I'm the guy installing speakers in your fucking kitchen and shit. You know? I'm making them geometric fucking lamps. Or fr uh, frames or whatever the fuck. So you can put your little fucking Chia Pet looking plant in that shit. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could make fun of fucking... You know, you know what? Like, I'll make fun of sound designers and composers. I'll make fun of, of us. Uh, look like half of them, half of us look like fucking zombies. I'm brown, so I get, I get to get away with that shit. But they be a bunch, like every sound designer, every composer, pasty as fuck. Pasty as damn near transparent. They step in a room with green light, they look green. When they step into a room with yellow light, they look yellow. Transparent ass motherfuckers. Oh, too many black t-shirts. How many black t-shirts you need, bro? Ma'am? How many black... Okay, yeah, that one got sparkles on it. Oh, you wore the black sparkly dress? That's cool. It's still black. Oh, wow. Ponytails? You love ponytails? How about beards? Well, actually, you know, I can't even shit on people for beards because everybody damn near... Have a beard now, so that's not that's nothing special. How about showing up to meetings on time? Ever met a sound designer or a composer or a music maker or a fucking create creative spirit? Show up to some shit on time. Show up to some shit on the right day. Where you at? Anybody know? Where's uh, where's Frederick? Anybody know where Frederick is? It's his, it's his turn in stand-up. This 40-minute long fucking stand-up that's supposed to be 15 minutes. Anybody seen Frederick? Oh, shit, bro. Sorry I'm late, bro. Here's the deal, man. Fucking Frederick. I'm a Frederick. That's me. A 100% I'm a Frederick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I even, like, I'm, I, like, act shocked and shit when people are like, we don't really know where Arthur is. I'm like, what? I'm active on Slack. I send emails back to, uh, four hours later. It's fine. I'm responsible. Yeah, I'm a fucking Frederick. <laughs> Yo, uh, I'll be honest with y'all about um, me and my wife. My wife and I. We work on this show like together like we have meetings about it mm -hmm. and we plan shit wow. and we even planned out like a few episodes in advance just to get the ball rolling so some of these questions that i quote unquote ask aren't actually from anyone except me like i'm like oh maybe someone would ask this question questions from but myself we don't have any listeners yet so i gotta ask myself fucking questions questions you from dig myself. so don't be too harsh on me uh for doing that you know, as soon as social kick off and people are actually listening, hopefully, uh, and I'll have some fuck questions. It's a wrap. Once I get those questions, we listen to these podcasts as part of our meetings, right? Like we have to go over the show. Like we have to listen to the show. So we sit down, we listen to the show when uh, my kids asleep or whatever. And she was listening to this show, like another take that I had done because I do mul I do multiple edits of this shit and I received such a trashing I think she kind of took pleasure in trashing me a little bit which is fine 
I get it. I'm a fucking prick. I could probably take a trash in every now and again. But like I was rambling on in the previous segment about being a game dev. I like, I'm, I'm like, I started it by saying, you know, fuck, some of these days can be so boring and blah, blah, blah. And then I literally went on to explain how boring the day is. And she's listening to it and she's like, dog, I stopped listening like 10 minutes ago. I've been rambling for 10 minutes. She checked out. She's like, you did the exact same thing that you said annoys you about your fucking gig. Don't be fucking boring. Do something like interesting. Like it's not funny. You're just rambling on and on. And man, nobody will humble your ass like family. Family will put you right in your fucking place. As soon as you think you fly as fuck, go talk to a family member. Go ask them what they think of some shit you're doing. They're going to humble your ass right the fuck up. I promise you that. Don't try to be fly around family. All right, let's, uh, this next segment, uh, I'm calling Dope or Dumb. And it's what trend in games or whatever is either dope or kind of dumb. Dope or dumb. All right, so a dope trend, super dope trend that I have just fallen down the rabbit hole of. Uh, I fall asleep watching these fucking videos. I've been telling all of my nerdy friends about it. Uh, I'm probably late to the game. Y'all probably know about this shit long before I did. So here we go. The SCP Foundation. S as in seaside. C as in... Uh Uh-oh. P as in pelican. Foundation. SCP Foundation. Let me see if I can break this down to you. It's basically... uh, online community fiction there's this wiki where all of these entries have been made from the perspective of people that work at the scp foundation and the scp foundation's mission is to uh what is it it's their mission is to secure contain and protect it's just so wild uh Anomalies that happen on Earth uh, that they that the if the public knew about would cause mass hysteria, the collapse of nations, destruction of the world. These anomalies happen, and the SCP Foundation has to secure, contain, and protect by any means necessary. So it's this online database of stories um, written by people from all over the world, I assume, about all of these different anomalies. So it's like, a, it's like this huge, I think there's like, like beyond 5,000 individual unique entries on this thing. Not even to mention the tales, this SCP tales, which is even more sort of backstory and narrative about this, this lore that people are making up. Something like this could only exist on the internet. On the internet is some wild shit. Somebody in fucking, I don't know, Mexico. Mexico. Can write an ad to this lore. And the whole world will read it. Mexico. And somebody in fucking Finland will make a drawing of the anomaly that this person in Mexico wrote about. Finland. And now it's bigger. And it just keeps growing. And then somebody's going to make a video. There's this guy called the rubber. The rubber, like the other word, the other word for a condom. Yep, got it. He makes animated videos about the SCP entities. And they're dope. I mean, they're simple, but they're, they're dope. What I'm trying to say is the SCP Foundation is a perfect example of how the internet can be used for good and can be used um, to create on levels that humanity never really saw before. You can collaborate with people all over the world and everyone sharing in the story that we're all writing and all experiencing. I fucking love it. Go take a couple hours and just dig into the SCP Foundation and read that stuff. Some of it's hilarious. Some of it's truly terrifying. I'll tell you what, too. A lot of people are interested in 
getting into narrative, like breaking into writing for games. This is a perfect way to do something like this. This is a perfect exercise uh, if you want to be a game writer because you, you're basically coming up with kind of a, a narrative design and it has to interlock with, it has to work well with the rest of the fiction. You can't just be making up any kind of shit you want. Uh, you have to adhere to the rules of the SCP Foundation lore. So it's, it's, a, it's a really great framework to work in if you're trying to break into writing for games. Any of these things. I mean, there's a million of them, right? My boy was telling me about the other uh, creepypasta and them kind of things. Great way to hone your skills if you're trying to break into video game writing. Check that shit out. SCP Foundation. Dope trend. Another dope trend. Not so recent, but still very relevant to me anyway. Legalize weed. Ooh, boy. I waited a long time for that shit to happen, and it happened, and it seemed like only yesterday cops were fucking with me for smoking weed. Fucking assholes. assholes. But uh, let's talk about some weed strains. I got some weed notes for y'all. I make a lot of weed notes because I smoke a lot of weed. I use weed for different things. Creativity, relaxation... Anxiety, sleep, all kinds of shit. Yeah, I might be a burnout, but you ain't making a podcast right now, are you, fuckhead? So, I still got motivation. I still got fucking drive. I know a lot of people think if you smoke weed, you're a fucking loser and you don't do shit. Not true. Not fucking true. Stop that shit. So, it's time for... Weed notes. What am I smoking on today? Today we got some, the classic. The classic, the staple, belongs in every single weed box, in every grinder. The keef is magnificent. Classic strain. If you smoke weed, you probably smoked it. If you smoke weed and you haven't smoked it, doggy, get your shit together. GDP. Hey! GDP, GDP, GDP. Those in the know know what that is. Granddaddy Purple. Classic Indica strain. All right, let me tell you all the, the, the uh, stats on the, on the batch that I got. THC 0.2%. Not bad, eh? THC A 14.6%. THC V 0%. CBD 0.3%, which is kind of interesting. You don't usually see a lot of CDB in GDP. CBD and GDP? I usually see higher THC in GDP, but you get what you get, you know what I mean? And then there's a bunch of 0% on so pretty much everything else, except for CBGA, which is 0.4%. Granity Purple. Known for its berry-like flavors. It tastes like fucking grapes or uh, kind of blueberry-ish. Maybe some, some might say raspberry-ish. But it's definitely got a berry-like flavor. You can smoke it if you want. You can smoke it if you want. But I find that vaping brings out more of the flavor of herb, of flower, not of juice, of flower. I find vaping, it brings out the flavor more uh, than smoking it. Because smoking it gets, it gets all contaminated, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that you should smoke. I'm not one of those people that say, like, smoking is bad or whatever. I fucking love smoking. Smoking's the shit. Kids. Nah, kids. <laughs> kids don't smoke. But smoking is the shit, okay? Uh, but vaping just brings out that flavor. Uh, GDP, I find, is really good for that end of day come down. Or you just finished doing an activity that was strenuous and you need to relax and you need, you need a mixture of, like, that calm down, bring down your mental energy, as well as kind of relax your body. So like, like, you know, it's winter now. Fucking feet of snow every fucking where. You get done shoveling, shoveling your fucking back out, and you puff on some GDP, and like, you're like, oh, I don't really feel that pain no more. 
uh, I can let go. My body can let go in order to heal itself. Very important. Your body has to let go to heal itself. Yoga pants. Uh, kind of loosens you up, you know. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend it for conversation. Maybe, maybe. But like, I, I would. I would rather use it for for silent relaxation. Because you know, people come around, they want to yap and shit and talk. I don't think GDP is good for like socializing and mixing it up and fucking debating and all that bullshit. Um, what else can I say about it? I just smoked some, so now I'm starting to feel the effects. Uh, heavy eyes, for sure. Yeah, heavy eyes. A little bit of, make sure you got, stay hydrated, folks. You smoke weed, make sure you have a water bottle. Double the size of a normal water bottle. Don't get a fucking small water bottle. Don't get a small glass of water. Get a lot. Walk around with that shit. Because that's how people, like, I've passed out from fucking smoking weed when I was like, I don't know, 17. From being a dumbass and smoking a bunch of blunts and smoking all this shit and not drinking no water. This shit, it sucks. It's like getting a massage. It like sucks the juice out of you. So you got to stay hydrated. Um, apparently it makes you go on fucking tangents. This GDP shit. Because how, how long have I been rambling for? All right, let's move on. Medicate and meditate. Okay, so I like to do this exercise. I, I try to do it daily. I don't often get to it daily because I'm, you know, fucking busy doing other shit or I get pulled in a million different directions. But uh, if you're prone to like depressing thoughts or you get down on yourself, the hater within starts creeping his head up. Uh, I find this exercise really, really helpful to kind of balance me out. And to help put things in perspective. It's called a gratitude exercise. I think I learned it from a YouTube uh, channel. He's like Dad University or something. I started watching him when, right when I had a son. When, when I was about to have my, my kid. And it, you know, I was feeling like all kinds of emotions. Like the end of my fucking uh, simple life. And like I got all this responsibility. Now I have a son. And like, oh, my vape's ready. Uh... Yeah, uh, yeah. so I was going through all that shit, and I, I was, like, looking online for, like, self-help and shit like that, because I do that, you know? I think a lot of people do that. They look for self-help online and shit. That's why all those channels are so fucking big, right? Um, but it's this exercise, a gratitude exercise. I pick five things, and I spend a couple minutes writing them down. Like, I have a whiteboard uh, in the studio, and... I just write down these five things and I keep them on the whiteboard all the time. You're going to do it with me. Uh, if, if you want, I mean, I'm not going to fucking twist your arm to practice gratitude, but it's, I think it's a really helpful exercise and it's a healthy mental exercise. And it's probably better for you than whatever the fuck you're doing right now, even listening to this podcast. So, So, let's, uh, let's kick it off. Join in if you want. Okay. okay. What am I grateful for? Easy. Easy. Wifey. Wifey. She's the shit. My son smiles. I'll make you wake up in the morning. I'm grateful for my musical talent. Right, because you could. You know, so this is a great way to boost yourself up. You're, grat you, you're grateful for some shit you're good at. You know, so my musical talent. Uh, I'm grateful for a working penis. Yo, for real though. Some people out there don't have working penises, and that's just sad. And my fifth one is, let's say, this show. I'm grateful for this show because it helps me clear my head and it's fun. I love doing it. So that's the gratitude exercises for this week. If you have certain things you were grateful about, hit me up uh, and share what you, you know, what you do for your gratitude exercise. I'd love to hear it. It'll help inspire me to 
be grateful for other things as well. Yo, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is wild. I actually have some, um, listener responses from people who listened to the first episode. Isn't that great? Yeah. Uh, the first one is from James who reached out on Twitter and told me that I could see some eight bit dicks in a game called beat them and eat them. So I'm going to go look it up. We'll, we'll look at this in real time. Okay. One second. Oh, fuck. All right, so beat him and eat him, I guess, is for the Atari 2600. And there's a guy on top of a building with a, a significant member. Uh, he is generously endowed, blessed even. And there are some naked white women running around underneath uh, said building, uh, gobbling up what appears to be uh, excretions from said member. Not, not super classy, but definitely an example of an 8-bit pee-pee. Uh, no example of a 8-bit VV poo poo which is disappointing, but I kind of expected it to, to be an 8-bit pee-pee just because it's dudes. Dudes love drawing pee-pees, and a dude probably made this fucking game. His cajones are weird. His cajones seem to, like, have a missing pixel. Either that or that's supposed to be his, his hands, like his open hands. Uh, this is borderline disturbing to me. Yeah, I mean, well, thanks, James. Thanks. I'm um, scarred. Thank you. All right, our second uh, listener submission for 8-bit peepees or VV poo poos uh, is from Jay. Uh, he says an 8-bit peeper can be seen on Shower With Your Dad Simulator. So let's look that one up. I won't get in trouble for searching that shit, right? Showering with my dad. Anyway. All right, this already seems like this is just a modern 8-bit game. This is not, this is way too slick to be an old school game, but there is, you pick a dad and you pick a kid and you're walking around looking for your dad. You're a little, you're a little kid that looks exactly like your dad. Mustache and all. This guy kind of looks like the uh, Bob from Bob's Burgers. And you just got to touch, you got to run up and touch your dad while he's taking a shower. I will give him props. I will give him props for um, trims, pubes, trims on the dad. Uh, nice touch. Very simple. Basically five pixels uh, that are the hair color of the dad. And clearly a, a pee pee. A pee pee on one cajones, which is an interesting choice. It's a pee pee viewed at from the side. Uh, if you've ever seen a pee pee from the side, this is what it looks like in 8 bit world. Um, great. I'm really glad I asked this fucking question. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Well, that about does it, y'all. It's a wrap. We're done. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope you come back next time for the next episode. Real quick before we go, all my social media, it's Greasy Says, G-R-E-A-S-Y-S-A-Y-S -S -S on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. You can listen to my shit on Spotify, Bandcamp, and SoundCloud. Uh, that's under MQM-CUE. So go check all that shit out. Follow me. All that shit. So, greasy people, thanks for coming out. Like, subscribe, comment. Give me feedback. Very important. Tell me to go fuck myself. Not as important. And until next time, it's me, Greasy, checking out with the room key. Latest. Latest.